I just like to give you an update as promised on the situation with the South Coast Sewage and the Barbados Water Authority. First, I'll touch on the injection wells. The wells are still in operation, but they're functioning at a significantly reduced capacity. The wells are functioning to take less than 10% of the sewage of the effluent coming out of the plant. Um, the Barbados Water Authority is working in conjunction with the operator to optimize the efficiency of the wells through the manipulation of the valves and the pumps. So they're trying to balance the flows going into the wells to try to get optimal retention by the wells. Once no longer functioning as one of the main reasons, main means of disposal, one of the wells will then be cleaned and capped to investigate the potential for further disposal of treated waste and the functioning capabilities. The sewer investigations. Investigations commence on July 29, 2018 with flushing of the sanitary sewer lines while non-invasive excavations proceeded, access, proceeded to provide access to the force main. The investigations with the two sewer lines took exactly four weeks to complete with the result that both of the sewers can be repaired using trenchless technology. So we determined from the get-go that digging up the road to replace the lines was the last resort for the Barbados Water Authority because it was not so simple as just digging up pipes as you might see when you drive down the road. Because of where the pipes are located, they are about 15 feet down in the groundwater and the both sewer lines, both the inflow line and the outflow line are cased in cement. In addition, there are a number of utilities and services running on the ground in the same area like natural gas, electricity, other things that make digging up the road not a viable option. The road will only be dug up to fix these pipes if nothing else can possibly work. The, after we were able to access both lines, it took us about a month to run the cameras down the length of the lines, both the inflow line and the outflow line. Because as we sent the camera down, we kept butting obstacles. So you send the camera down, and then you have to go in and remove the obstacle, flush out that line, and send the camera a little bit further, and then you butt another block because the sewers hadn't been maintained for almost 10 years. So it was a painful process, but we managed to complete the inspection of both lines in affected areas, and based on what the camera footage revealed, we are confident that both lines can be repaired without having to dig up the road. They can be re repaired by using a liner inside the pipe, a quite technical process. It's interesting to see using the liner inside the pipe without having to actually break further or dig up the pipe. The force main repairs are ongoing. The force main is the one that is of greatest concern to us because that is the one that takes the sewage from the treated, well, the processed sewage from the plant to the marine outfall about a mile off Needham's Point. The repair to the force main requires the installation of two sectional liners over the breaches within the sewer. The first liner, I'm happy to tell you, was successfully installed on October 19, 2018. So last week, we successfully, after a number of attempts, managed to get the first liner in. Now let me explain this. If you imagine a pipe that was cased in, in cement, there's a breach in the pipe. Some of the grouting behind the pipe is gone. So effectively, you can actually, it's not just a crack, but you can stick your fingers through the hole. Right? Stick your hand through the hole. So while we lined that breach, and in normal cases, if the grouting was still there or the cement was still there, just lining that breach would be sufficient once. But because there's the liner and then there's nothing behind it, we don't want to take the risk that when we pressurize the pipe, when we pressurize the force main, that it compromises the liner. So the best advice we had was to line that one section twice to reinforce the liner, and then we'd be in a good position to send sewage down the pipe. Um, during the installation of the first liner, in any event, a bulge, there was a slight bulge there. Now, in order to line it the second time, you need to have it completely smooth. Any bulges or any sharp ends to the liner will let you tear the next liner when it's being installed. So we have to cut it down. This requires the use of a very special piece of equipment that was brought in to do that purpose. Um, 
we cut the first one. We had done a number of cuts where we had mishaps or the, the liner wasn't put in properly. But we were so close to the finish and the cutting machine brought down. Now, there are about four of those cutting machines in the United States. One was sent to Barbados. They don't want to send another one to Barbados. So we have to get that one repaired. So the Barbados Water Authority is currently investigating the options for repair of this equipment and any alternative means for removing the obstruction. Once the force main is completely repaired with the liner, the Barbados Water Authority will begin repairs to all the access points on the force main and conduct pressure te testing of sections of the sewer before it's fully reactivated. The repair to the force main and the activation of the injection wells will significantly reduce the overall impact of the issues affecting the South Coast and create the opportunity to focus comprehensively on the long-term solutions. The gravity main repairs are ongoing. A contract has been signed with a contractor to repair the gravity main using cure in place pipe technology. What this effectively done, does is for the whole section from Graham Hall all the way back up to the old Scotia Bank. Um, and the affected section, they're going to feed a pipe through. You actually have to feed a hot mixture through that when it cools, it solidifies as a pipe. So you effectively are lining the broken gravity main from the inside without digging the road again. So that requires quite specialized equipment that we don't have in Barbados as well. Um, and we are importing the equipment and the vehicles and it's approximately, this will take approximately six weeks to complete. However, we cannot fix the gravity line until we have fixed the force main. It is necessary to fix the force main first so we can divert the sewage to where it's supposed to go before we do a fix on the gravity line. Let me explain that. As everybody knows, um, we were met with the problem where the sewage was being discharged into the swamp. The sewage was coming up on the streets and it was eventually finding its way into the swamp through the storm, storm drains. Um, yeah. Some was being put into the swamp what we had to do, and this is being, what we had to do is we had to control where the sewage went. We took it off the street, we created channels and redirected the sewage along the eastern side of the Graham Hall Swamp, controlling and feeding the flushing of the swamp into the sea. So because the inflow pipe, the pipe, pipe coming into the plant is broken, it is taken up. Storm water is taken up, ground water is taken up, everything along with the sewage. In addition, when it was coming through the outflow pipe, the outflow pipe was broken. So what was happening is you were having circulation of the outflow coming back in to the plant. So you were flushing water out of the plant and that water was finding its way back into the plant in addition to the sewage and in addition to the ground water. As it stands out, what is going into the plant is not just straight sewage, it is sewage mixed with groundwater. So it is heavily diluted. We don't want to fix the sanitary sewer because then we would be effectively sending concentrated sewage into the canals alongside Graham Hall. So as it stands now, we're taking the dilution from the groundwater and that is the best we can do at this point in time. But that is the reason why we have not started the fix on the sanitary sewer. The fix of the force may have to happen first. Now, the effects on Graham Hall. With the reduced capacity to the injection wells to dispose of the wastewater, a significant volume of this is currently being discharged into the emergency disposal canal. This diluted wastewater eventually makes its way to the sluice gate and eventually to the near shore environment. This is a problem we inherited. We are trying our best to deal with it, but this is a problem that occurred over the last three years and we are trying to sort it out. Um, the BWA, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health, has just finished clearing the eastern side of the swamp. So if you were to go to the Graham Hall Swamp now, you would see that there are natural flows through the eastern side. Some of the fish have returned. We've cleaned out a lot of what was in there in our effort to rehabilitate the swamp. Also, we are trying to cut down on the mosquito problem as well. The 
Barbados Water Authority has also entered an agreement with the Ministry of Health to clean the buffer zone. The bulk of the mosquitoes and the issues with the mosquitoes come because of the buffer zone. So there's the eastern side that has the canals that lead to the sluice gate. There's the western side that really takes the normal water into the swamp. And there's a buffer zone that effectively separates the eastern side from the western side. Um, the buffer zone is perhaps one of the largest sections of the swamp. It is very difficult to clean because in some areas it is more than 20 feet deep. You can't tell until you step on it and then you suck down. So we can't send any and everybody in there to clean it. The Ministry of Health has cleaned it before. They're the persons who have experience in it. Um, we have contracted with them and we have actually managed to effect the cleaning at a fraction of the cost that we were quoted by private contractors. Um, they obviously don't have the manpower and could not clean the eastern section and the western section at the same time. They've just finished cleaning the eastern section. I expect the buffer zone, the cleaning of the buffer zone to start by next week. They've given me a timeline of four to six weeks. That's it. Four to six weeks to get it cleaned. Um, but immediately as you start to clean it and there's flow in there, the mosquitoes breed in stagnant water. So once we get a flow going through the area and we start to debush the area where the mosquitoes are concentrated, there should start to be some relief with respect to the mosquitoes on the south coast. During the last week, residents have complained about a stench emanating from the swamp. The issue was investigated and the smell was found to have originated from an area of stagnant water located in the southern channel of the eastern side of the swamp. I'm sorry we don't have a diagram to make it more clear to you, but this is the area closer to the Stoops Gate. Um, it's the southern most part of the eastern channel. The channel is currently being cleared. We have cleared a significant section of it. That's why the orders went down recently. But because we're having to regulate the Sluice Gate, um, we can't do the free flows because we have to time the opening of the Sluice Gate as well, bearing in mind that people are using beaches further down the south coast. So we don't want a situation where we've had to close Worthing Beach and down to the lights. We don't, we're trying to avoid a situation where we have to close any further down. So you have to closely regulate and monitor the opening and closing the sluice gate to minimize the near shore impact. So that brings with itself some difficulties because it takes a longer time to flush. But for the people who will be experiencing the smell on the south coast over the last week or so, you should have noticed a significant difference. We are monitoring it daily and we are removing the stagnant water and flushing the areas um, as we can. We've also had some issues with people having their own drains and guttering and waterways clogged. Um, some have had a lot of rubbish in them, old chairs, stoves, and all of this is contributing to the problem. We have started the process of removing those, but that really should not be the responsibility of the Water Authority. People need to be more careful in what they put into the waterways. But it is a problem that exists. We are not going to try to allocate blame. We are simply dealing with the fix. So we've started the cleaning of the area behind the Graham Hall Swamp, closest to the houses. And even where the blockages are on people's properties, or they're not on the government property, or on the nature reserve, we are still flushing them because it doesn't make sense to say this is your problem when people are complaining. So once we see the issue, we are flushing it until such time as we get the matter reserve re resolved permanently. The cleaning of the channel um, should be completed by the 26th of October. So pretty soon we should have the channel, the southern channel that was causing problems entirely cleared. But one, as I said, we still have to monitor it daily and maintain it as necessary. The sluice gate, in order to minimize the effects of the wastewater contamination in the swamp, the sluice gate, which is normally managed by the drainage division for flood mitigation, is now being managed by the Barbados Water Authority. The gate is being opened every day on the falling tide to ensure the maximum flushing of the swamp. What the falling tide is, you can't just open the sluice gate wherever you have a problem. Because if the tide is higher, if outside is higher than what is inside and you open the sluice gate, then all the water, the salt water, is going to come rushing into the swamp 
and causes other ecological issues. So the sluice gate is only open when the high tide is going down so that anything coming out through the sluice gate is being pulled away by the tide for this person. All right, so just to explain that. But we're monitoring it daily and we open it as we can. Sometimes we have to make a judgment call. If the, the falling tide occurs during peak swimming time, then we will not open the sluice gate at that point in time. Um, but the good thing is that we have been daily monitoring the near shore quality of the beaches in the surrounding area. When we started, we were doing it weekly, but we are not taking that risk. So daily, we monitor and test samples from all the beaches on the south coast. And that way, we can be on top of it if the readings are not what we expect. As it stands now, we've had the expected readings on Worthing, which is why that beach remains clear. But the, word, the readings on the beaches, the other beaches generally down past from Accra down are within acceptable limits. So that is why we have not sought to close those beaches. The good thing is that once we get the fix done on the force main and we're able to test, to pressure test the force main and also to flow test the force main, once we get that fix done, we should be able to reopen the beaches within one to two weeks of that. So everything rides on the actual fix the force main. Um, we accept that the emergency measure of putting sewage into the canals alongside the greenhouse swamp cannot be tolerated. It cannot form part of the long-term plan of any sewage treatment plan on the south coast. So we are aware that we have to build a marine outfall um, out past Graham Hall. It is not simple, as simple as laying pipe. Beard is doing oceanographic studies and current flow studies so that we are assured that when that the distance of the outfall from shore is sufficient that anything being released does not come back into shore by Graham Hall or any way down the coast of Barbados that it, it be taken out to sea. So we're in the process of having those done. But the, in any event, the outfall will not form part of this exercise. The outfall will be part of the eventual design for the upgraded sewage treatment plant. It is a necessity. The outfall itself is going to cost us between 30 and $40 million. So we can't do that from BWA funding. That has to be part of a, a funded project and part of um, a long-term considered plan. <coughs> There's a plan to have a fully staffed information hub on site near to the swamp, which will be the direct customer service point for the residents. Quite often, if you have a complication arising from what is going on, we are unlikely to know. You will know faster than us whether you are being affected by something that's going on with the sewage remediation or the Graham Hall remediation project. So we need that information from you because once we know from you we can deploy resources to rectify the issues that you are facing or mitigate the effects on you. So it was thought necessary that we should put an information hub close to the action, that people can walk to it, or that officers can move and deploy from the hub to visit the affected areas in real time. That is effectively the update on the South Coast sewage issue, just to put to complete it, because I like to do Bridgetown and South Coast together. The Bridgetown plant is currently operating at between 80 and 90% capacity. So it is operating at a higher capacity than it has for the last 10 years. What has happened where we have not gotten to 100% capacity is that there's some pieces of equipment that need to be installed at the Bridgetown sewage treatment plant. We need to have screens to ensure that bulky or big objects don't make it into the plant. The screens we have are old and they cannot handle it. So the work that we have done so far to bring it to 80%, it makes no sense going to the 100% if you don't have the screens because all that's going to happen is the same problem that caused the breakdown in the first place is going to happen to cause it again. So we are working with the Ministry of Finance to try to get the funds released for the screens, but the screens cost a couple million dollars. But once those screens are in place so that the sewage coming into the Bridgetown sewage treatment plant is being screened properly and regulated properly, so you 
get go into the plant only what is supposed to be in the plant, then we will take it to 100%, and we expect to be able to do that relatively easy because the bulk of the heavy lifting has, in fact, been done. So I am pleased to report that the Bridgetown plant is working as well as could be expected now, and all fingers crossed, soon we can get to a point where we should have a similar happy story to say to the South Coast. I'm going to turn the issue of the garbage and sewage contribution over to the chairman of the Barbers Water Authority. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Minister. As you are aware, the GSC was implemented for the purposes of facilitating the improvement of the Sanitation Services Authority to um, as it relates to the um, improvement of garbage collection, um, as well as improve, Im improving the entire sewage project, not limited to the South Coast, but to all of Barbados. And I need to emphasize that because I've received a number of letters from people saying, I am on the West Coast, we have our own we are not connected to the South Coast sewage. This is not about the South Coast sewage only. The Prime Minister made it very clear that this is about improving the entire sewage issue within and throughout Barbados. The reality of the situation is it was implemented in August and between August and September, the Barbados Water Authority has seen a decline in its revenue by 40%. The reason for this is that a lot of people do not understand that the legislation as it exists requires that the Barbados Water Authority as a collection agency, not only for the sewage improvement, but also for the SSA, must first take out the GSC. So there are individuals who may say, well, I'm only paying my water bill. Yes, you may only pay your water bill, but the net effect of that is we are obligated by statute to take out the GSC first. The net result of that is, is that your water bill would be in arrears. As the Prime Minister has made very clear, as has our Minister, the Barbados Water Authority operates in a deficit position. As at today's date, we are owed over $15 million in arrears of water payments pursuant to bills being issued. This is being compounded by the fact that people do not comprehend the impact that the GSC has. And the reality of the situation is that we require the funding to be able to improve the collection of garbage, as well as to ensure that what, has, what we are currently dealing with as it relates to the South Coast sewage does not reoccur, and to ensure that going forward, we implement and put in place systems that will facilitate that the likelihood of such a thing occurring is minimal to zero percent. So I think it is incumbent on us as the Water Authority to be able to explain to people that the GSC is not a choice. It's a part of your bill. And failure to pay it means it comes out of your water bill and therefore results in you being in arrears. It's a difficult time for all of us and we understand it and therefore it is imperative that we all recognize that exactly what is happening as it relates to that. That being said, the legislation recognizes that there are people who are going to require relief 
and as such, the, a relief board has been established. They actually met, uh, I think it was earlier this week, they, they met. Uh, the application forms are available at the Barbados Water Authority and we are seeking to extend where one can apply for same so that one can make an application for relief. The relief criteria has been set by the Ministry of Finance and as such, it's not something within the control of the Barbados Water Authority. And I need for people to understand that. We are acting as a collection agency for the SSA as it relates to the GSC under a criteria established by the Ministry of Finance. And therefore we ask that those who require relief apply for, for the forms, collect the forms, fill them out, and the relief board will actually um, mediate on it and re refer to people going forward. I also wish to touch on the restructuring. As you would be aware, um, on Wednesday we had a staff meeting with our staff as we felt it was necessary to speak with them directly before we actually spoke with the union. Um, in the Barbados Water Authority, we actually have two bargaining units, bargaining unit one, which represents the general workers, and bargaining unit two, which actually uh, uh, covers management. And at the staff meeting, one question that was asked, which was really very interesting, was why did we call the meeting if we're not in a position to give specifics? We're not in a position to give specifics because we are bound by certain IR regulations. We have to meet with the union first. That having been said, as chairman of the Barbados Water Authority, together with the board, we felt that it was necessary that we meet with the staff. We're not hiding behind the Prime Minister. We're not hiding behind a memo. We needed for our people to understand that we get where they are. We will never pretend to comprehend fully what it feels like to come to work every day wondering if today is the day. Am I going to be left home? Am I going to go? We also felt it was necessary to have the meeting because on our review of minutes and interaction with the staff, there seemed to be a tremendous fear of what was a culture, as the staff have articulated to us, of victimization and favoritism. And we needed the staff to understand, not on our watch. By the same token, I know that there are a number of you who hold the opinion that the Barbados Water Authority has done very little to improve its reputation. Very little to gain the public's trust. And while there may be some merit in that, because we will not deny that, because there is always room for improvement. At the end of the day, as a board, we are dealing with people whose lives will be ultimately changed by decisions that we are obligated to make in an effort to stabilize the entire country. And in that regard, we want to re-emphasize that the principles of fairness and natural justice will be applied in the retrenchment process, which is a corollary any restructuring within the gamuts and ambits of the BERT. And to that extent, we will do everything in our power to ensure that the delivery of water to the people of Barbados, the, rep uh, the repairs to the mains and leaks will be addressed as promptly as possible, for we recognize that we are in charge of 
the most important resource of any country, of any nation, which due to global warming is becoming in shorter and scarcer supply, and that is water. As you all are aware, we have a Facebook page and we welcome at this point in time any suggestions, any ideas, any alternatives that you as a public may have. And on that note, I wish to emphasize the scarcity of water. The minister earlier today in parliament um, on addressing several issues mentioned how we can mindlessly fail to recognize how much we waste water. Since becoming the chair of the Barbados Water Authority, I can tell you even down to my four-year-old recognizes when she goes to have a bath, mommy, the bucket is not in the bathroom. Collect your water while you wait for it to get warm. That water can be used to wash clothes, to water plants. Be mindful of when you brush your teeth. Don't leave the water running. You have within your power the ability to control the cost of your water, the amount that you have to pay and likewise for corporations and companies, restaurants and hotels who are claiming and crying and, and we, don't get me wrong, we understand it. But it gets hard before it gets better. Why you register your concerns and complaints to the Water Authority? It's imperative that we become mindful of just how much of the cost is actually within our control. The Prime Minister has mandated, as has the Minister, that we investigate grants relative to water saving devices, relative to programs that will inform the public just how they are capable of actually having control over their own water bill. And as these plans unfold, we will be in constant communication with you as the public so that together we can bring Barbados to where we know it needs to be. Over to you, Minister. Any questions? Uh, yes. Um, uh, this one is for the reduction. Um, the 40% reduction um, in revenue the 40 million reduction 40%. 40 percent sorry uh, yes the actually let me get it the 40 the 40 percent reduction is as a result of the implementation of the GSC right. right so that will be between August and uh, end of September uh, GM, end of September and that's largely due to the fact we've actually had bills come in it was very interesting to see where people actually scratched off the amount for the GSC and paid their water bill, not recognizing that the GSC is a first payout. So even though you may have paid your water bill, the Barbados Water Authority as a collection agency for the SSA and for itself as it relates to sewage, we are obligated to take that amount out first. So that fifteen million dollars is a result already in arrears as a result of that. No, 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 no. The fifteen million dollars in arrears, it's arrears over uh, and I mean I'm it's over a period of time. And what I requested was as at today's date, how much is owed to the Barbados Water Authority in arrears? And that amount is fifteen million dollars. So within that would be the GSC that people did not pay okay. during the months of August and September. And a uh, question to the Minister. Um, Let me just clarify something based 
or what you just asked as well. I want, I'm a very sympathetic person, but I'm sympathetic where people find themselves in a situation that is not of their own making. So if someone, and the Water Authority has provision for this, if, some, if someone ends up with a bill of $20,000, and it's because they had an underground leak or something that could not have been discovered by, by them on a visual inspection, then there exists a framework to waive most, if not all, of the excess water um, and, and the rate for that because you couldn't be expected to know that your pipe burst on the ground. That's an entirely different situation from where people look at the bill and decide that they are not paying the government contribution that the law requires that you pay. What people need to understand is that if you do choose to not pay the amount allocated for the GSC, then your water bill is short by that amount. And when those arrears mount up, you will be disconnected. And I'm saying from now, unless you get relief the avenues afforded by the law, that being the, the relief board, unless you apply for and obtain relief, your decision to not pay the GSC is illegal. And if you get your water connected, please, so if you get your water disconnected because you did not pay the GSC, please do not call me. I am not interfering with issuing instructions to not that I should tamper with any decision of the water authority to disconnect someone because they took it upon themselves to make a stand and not pay the GSC. I want that to be very, very clear. Sorry. Can I ask a question here? All of what both of you all said, um, I'm wondering what extent which things be more specific and, 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 and talking about people not paying the bills and they're not paying the but I, I don't I don't even think it's a case of people having gone to the Fair Trading Commission people have taken yeah the Fair Trading Commission regulates utilities yes it, it, it. So, here what I'm trying to tell you. The Fair Trading Commission will step in if there's an injustice. The government has imposed a levy. To the best of my knowledge, no one has challenged that levy. That levy stands. It appears on your water bill. It is supposed to be paid. So, this is not a case of something being pending a fair trading decision and even so let's say somebody took you to court you still have to pay until you get a decision unless the court orders orders otherwise so what you imagine that you took it upon yourself to say i don't like the new tax rates that were introduced i am paying at the old bands because if i pay the new bands i can have to pay 500 dollars more so i am not paying that 500 dollars. i am paying on what it was before I mean, come on, you think you could go to the, the, the revenue commissioner with that? The Water Authority has at its disposal mechanisms for ensuring payment of its bills. I'm saying we exercise, the Water Authority I know exercises discretion in certain cases. In certain cases where people's bills have been disconnected and they've come forward and they've gone to Water Authority and it's a pensioner who didn't get their pension check or things like that. I know as a fact the Water Authority has ordered the reconnection of the bills of the, I mean, the reconnection of the water supply of the disaffected person until such time as they're able to deal with it. That is an entirely different case from your looking at your bill and deciding what you're going to pay or not. So no, the Fair Trading Commission has not, to the best of my knowledge, gotten involved in this so far. No, it's actually chairman. Chairman. Gender neutral. I really know that. Um, you know,
know specifically how much is owed from the GSE's portion of your um, arrears? Because I know you told me it's 15 million, you know, everything incorporated, but specifically as it came to GSE. There will never be an arrears on GSE in the sense that so long as someone pays their bill, the GSE comes out first. So arrears apply only for those who haven't paid anything towards their bill. And if that's the figure you're asking, I don't have that figure at this point in time. Okay, and then secondly, um, the 40% reduction, you can give us an idea in terms of actual dollar figures, where you're going to start or where that 40% means you're at now? Sorry, say that again? Okay, so you, you said it reduced the, you were able to reduce the 40%. Yeah. Um, can you give me a dollar figure? So if 40% is, say, 10 million, Well, on average, as the Prime Minister has indicated before, the revenue generated from water bills, it's about $10 million. So we are roughly now at $6 million because we've had to pay out the GSE before. Fortunately, it's figures that can be multiplied by 2 or divided by 10, because that's where my math ends and begins. So I just want to make, I just want to make one, thing, one other thing clear. It appears on the water bill. The chair has said it, I have said it, but I want to say very clearly, it is not a water, Barbados Water Authority tax. This is a mechanism by the Ministry of Finance. All that is happening is that the Water Authority is the collection agent for it. Your water bill has not gone up. Something else has been added to your water bill for collection because it was most convenient to put it for collection by the water authority. Let's call it a soft post sewage solution. What I can tell you, Colville, is that the liner, to actually apply the liner, takes about a night. To do the cutting will probably take about a day. So all things being equal, if we got the cutter fixed or we got the part of the cutter, we should be able to start the rectification. And if everything is working, it can be done in a couple of days. After that is done, understand that to get the fix going, we had to create an opening by the nature sanctuary, and then we had to create an opening down by, by, by Terry Caribbean, all right? So we will have to seal back those openings to then test the pipe. We will test it first with, with air, and then we're gonna flow test it. We're gonna have to send liquid down it, put in a flow meter at the point of discharge from the, the plant, and putting a flow meter at the end. So we know that if the amount being pushed out is the same amount as passing out at the other end. If it is less, we will know there's another break on the pipe. So the only way we can actually, our fix here is the fix that we know of. We are hoping that there are no other, there are no other breaches. We will only know whether there are other breaches once we have fixed the, the major one seal it, seal the pipe, and send water back down the pipe to be able to measure it. The good thing for us is that what has made that fix difficult is where it is, how deep it is, and the fact that it's encased in, in concrete. Once we get past a certain pipe point, the pipes, if you have to fix a section, let's say down by Kentucky, for example, right? Um, that pipe is not in cement, so you just dig the road in the spot, cut the pipe, fix that portion, and then fill back in the road. But Colvin, you, you, you actually said it. You, you, you said it. These are variables that we can't 
account for <coughs> in the ideal world this has been fixed already but I mean the fact is we have a super technical piece of machinery that requires a specified train operator right that came from Germany that brought down there's nobody here is outside of our we know what needs to be done but in order to get it done everything needs to be working uh, and um, just I just want to say this as well we are very very aware of the start of the tourist season and the implications in relation to that we're also very aware of the time constraints if you travel down the south coast or if you've traveled down there on a night recently you see the lights on, you see the trucks there, and sometimes you see me, because I saw some of y'all passing me on the, on the road at three in the morning. Because I want, when I, no, I'm, I'm being serious, as, as a minister, I want to know what it is that is actually happening. I want to understand it. I want to know if the holdup is the fault of the Barbados Water Authority, if it is the fault of the contract, or if it's an act of God. Right? So I want to take this opportunity, I hope the, the press carries this, People talk about civil servants a lot of the time and government workers and people in statutory cooperation. I want to commend the men who are down there night after night. And I don't know how Mr. Halliday rosters because I keep seeing the same people. <coughs> right? But the fact is they are working and they're pulling their weight and they're trying. And if it fails, they try again. And if it fails, they try again. So I just want to say thanks to those who are hands-on working. I want to say thanks to the Ministry of Health workers who did a yeoman service to clean out the eastern section of the swamp. I mean, they work hard to the point where if you go and look, it looks different, it smells different, and fish are returning. Right? So everybody understands what is at stake here, and we're all pulling our weight. Right? I don't want to say, Colville, that, you know what, enough. I set a firm deadline for this pipe to be fixed. It hasn't been fixed, dig up the road. If we dig up the south coast, that would probably have more of an effect on the tourist season and the general operation of business in Barbados and the effect for the businesses on Highway 7 than us taking our time with this. And we, ha we actually have to take our time with this. Um, we need to get it right because from the time we seal back those pipes and pressurize them and send the sewage back down the pipes, we don't want to look back up. We don't want to have to dig back up again. Um, well, one second. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because eventually, like this, I am not a technical person by the way. I wasn't either. I need to get some information though. You are, of the process, you are injecting these miners into the pipe itself, right? All right, let me talk you through that process. No. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect the press to carry out this for, for your edification, just so it probably helps you to report it better. You have the pipe. One of the problems that has been caused is that the pipes in Barbados are old pipes, so they're not the new metric size pipes. So a lot of the stuff, even when they brought the cutter, before sending the cutter to Barbados, they had to modify the cutter to fit in the pipes that we have because the dimensions that, is, that are standard in the States are not the dimensions that we, we have in Barbados, right? How you line it, imagine a, a tubular bladder, right? A tubular, you know those things that you start with boats from fenders, that when you tie up a boat, you hang it off the edge of the boat, something from bumping into the, another boat? So imagine a long one of those. It is deflated. It's covered with a rubber sleeve. Then along the outside of that sleeve, you have the liner, which is then coated with epoxy, is deflated. You then pull that liner from one of the openings in the, in the sewer, and you have to pull it blind, because you can't have the camera down there when it's being pulled. You have to pull it blind and gauge on the measurement of the rope for when it gets the right position. You have 18, no more than 18 minutes before that epoxy hardens. You then, when you get to the right point, you have to inflate the bladder, 
because the blood is connected to a compressor, you inflate the bladder. The bladder fills up, the liner then takes the form of the inside of the pipe. You leave the bladder in overnight, and then you pull out the bladder the next morning, and the liner should have hardened into position. Now understand, we're doing it blind. The contractor, none of the contractors that we consulted with have ever done it as long a distance as we are trying to do it here in Barbados. So we are trying to do it over 300 feet. They usually have manholes even on their force main. They have access point every 100 feet. Our force main, from the time it left the Green Hall Swamp, from the time it left the, the Green Hall plant, to when it reached off Needham's, had no points of entry. It was one long, unbroken, unaccessible pipe. So we had to create entry points. The only convenient places to do the entry points were by the Nature Sanctuary and by Terra Caribbean. The breach is somewhere close to the Old Scotia Bank. So you have to pull that bladder through there, blind. you cannot see when it reaches the point. So we had a situation where we inflated short because the rope actually stretched in pulling. So when the measurement reached the indicator point, the rope was actually lengthened. So we had it short, we had it long, we had it halfway. And each time you miss it, it does not dry properly because it's not where it's supposed to be. So you then have to cut it back out and smooth it back out. Because if you even understand the bladder pulls through, the bladder is tight in the pipe. So if you even have the liner buckling in there, the bladder can't pull through. So imagine, a, imagine you're trying to stick your finger down a straw. If there's hardened cement in the straw, your finger can't get past. You have to cut out the cement and then stick your finger. Using the same example that we use with bumpers and so mm -hmm. they have a shelf life. Mm -hmm. What's the shelf life for these guys? How long do we expect? 50 years. Once, once the liner is properly installed, mm -hmm. then we don't have to look back at that. We will have constructed a new plant with an outfall and be figuring out how to reuse wastewater in Barbados before that fails. And the other question that I have, my mathematics is horrible. You mentioned that you, it was fifteen million dollars in work yes. that the Water Authority has, and that's coming from the GSC. No, 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 no. no. Oh, that's sorry, that's coming from the person's not paying. No, it, that's fifteen million dollars in arrears total. total prior to, to date. Today. To date. So that is from an accumulation of people not paying their arrears. Yes. And I'm actually glad you raised that because one of the things that we are actually in the process of doing right now is we are preparing correspondence to be distributed to all parishes, to representatives of all parties, to notify their constituents that the Barbados Water Authority is actively addressing the issue of the arrears. We cannot rely on central government anymore. Actually, more importantly, central government has informed us that we cannot rely on them anymore to pay our bills. And therefore, we want everyone to know that we're going to be starting an active campaign in dealing with the arrears. And those individuals who are not in a position to be able to pay all of their arrears in one go are advised to make contact with the Customer Service Department of the Barbados Water Authority to enter into an arrangement to pay their arrears. But as Minister Abram says, those who find themselves in arrears due to circumstances beyond their control we will have a completely different dispensation dealing with them. But those who find themselves in arrears because they have made a decision that they are not paying the GSC. Interestingly, we did a survey. People pay their cell phone bills prior to paying their water bills. 
we as a country have to readjust our priorities. And the Barbados Water Authority can no longer be expected to carry that load. We can't. You mentioned the reps, that the assembly wanted to rep all parties who are the of Yes, please. And I take it to the assembly that is to the persons that actually were the fire. That's what we have, this, that, that's what we have, a, the water bill actually shows your arrears. And then there's a disconnection bill, a notice of, 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 of disconnection. I understand all of that, but you're sending the letters to say, to Mr. Abel, MP Abel, Mr. Abel. Yes. And you're, you're And his counterparts. Mm -hmm. And you're asking him to inform his constituents to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. Sorry? And you're, in, and you're asking him to tell his constituents to make arrangements to pay the bill, as opposed to telling the customers that this is what is happening. No, that's what we have our Facebook page for. That's what every single one of you are here for right now, to way. notify the public. We are going to have a full public campaign about it, but so with the greatest of respect, right? If you owe the bank money on your mortgage, right? And you don't pay, they demand. The equivalent of that demand is our disconnection notice. We are extending an extra notification by doing a public campaign, by ensuring that all constituency offices are notified because you see what happens is this, the reality of the situation is very simple, is that when somebody has a problem, they call their rep, their rep calls us. So we have to find the most cost efficient way to notify the public in general. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, earlier you mentioned the fact that you were playing as well. Workers were playing as well. Not not stoves in the sewer. I'm saying that behind Graham Hall, it they had some drains that were blocked and water was stagnating. That was what was contributing to the smell. We found a lot of the drains blocked. This is these are open drains. Like a, a waterway then. There, there were no stoves or fridges down in the sewer pipe. <laughs> It, it, <laughs> uh, there were any waterways leading to the canal. But I mean, we've. How do you prefer to deal with it? I mean, the reality is, it is there. So the public of Barbados does not want to hear from me when they call saying out there by Greenhouse smell bad. The thing is, people assume everything is happening on the South Coast, people assume it is sewage. I got a number of calls about water coming up by Big B um, today. Um, I was being bombarded with calls that sewage back on the street. It wasn't sewage, but it was a burst pipe, right? So the, the thing is, people, that smell, people assumed was something back in the, something directly related to the um, sewage issues. But it was stagnation of water in a drain. So my point is this, it, nobody wants to hear me as the minister responsible for water resources saying, well, that's not my ministry, that should be Minister Prescott's Ministry of Environment or Drainage or somebody else, or we need to go after the homeowner. Right? No, the fact is we have taken an approach. If it is affecting the people on the South Coast and it is any way related to the area in which we are working, we are going to try to deal with it. So when we saw that, my instruction was simple. Just get it clean. Get it clean, flush the drain, get the water flowing, get rid of the smell. Right? And we're gonna once again, I'm gonna ask you through Barbadians need to not indiscriminately dump. Right? When you have an old stove or an old fridge or an old chair in your house that is taking up space in your house and you want to get rid of it, the answer is not to throw it in a drain or pelt it in a gully. 
or throw it out by the swamp or just find a dark cart road and offload it there because all you're doing is shifting it from being your problem to being somebody else's. Right? So my main concern, my main concern in relation to that order was to get rid of the order. And that was simply done by instruction. Just I don't care whose fault it is. Our men are working down there. We have equipment down there. Just get it cleared. Um, the other thing as well is I would like Barbadians to be aware of what they put down the drain. A lot of what was clogging the sewer and caused the, the problem in the first place was fats, oils, and grease. I mean, we took out, when we started to jet the pipes, we sent a, a hose, a very, very high pressure hose on there with a spinning end that the water pressure is so strong it can break up almost anything. If you're in there, it's going to break, shatter you apart. And it then pulls it out. We were collecting at the sewage plant enough grease in a week to probably fill this room. Enough grease to fill this room. They pulled a blockage out of the pipe with a blob of grease, probably bigger than you, Calvin. No, I'm, I'm being, no. You, you see, we're laughing, but I'm, I'm, being, I'm being dead serious. So you may say to yourself, as you fry your chicken, and you don't want to find a way to dispose of it, or let me just pour it on the sink. You were thinking to yourself, I'm just pouring a pot of oil down the sink. But if you pour that pot of oil, and you, if everybody in here pours a pot of oil down one sink in Parliament, right? I am telling you that out there is going to block tomorrow because it's not built to handle it. We need to be more responsible in our practices. When we get the sewage, when we get the sewer system fixed and everything starts to operate properly, it's going to break again if Barbadians don't do what is right. What came out? Of the Bridgetown plant, right? All of the stuff that was in there didn't find itself in it didn't magically appear. That got in there through the sewers. It got in there because we didn't have the we didn't have the screens to screen it out. But all of what went in there, all the rags you all saw hanging down and things like that, that was people carelessly or negligently or maliciously managed to get those things into the drains and into the sewer. So we, we need as a country to be a lot more careful. It is all well and good for the Barbados Water Authority to tackle this problem, but it's everybody's problem. And I, everybody needs to be a part of the fix. We need to use less water, we need to be more conservative in our approach, and we need to be careful what we put on the sewers. Anything else? What? Anything you want to add, Mr. Allen? No, um, that's the question.